Hello and welcome to the May 15th open session of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Can I get a motion to open? So be it. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get a, a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I get a, a motion to approve the minutes from the May 1 closed session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from the May 1 open session? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Dean and Ms. Crossley from our future Farmers of America, you are up first. Uh, good evening. My name is Alyssa Crosley. I'm the president of the Queen Anne's County FFA chapter. And I am Trevor Dean, and I'm the treasurer of the Queen Anne's County FFA chapter. So we're here today to get approval for our field trip to the Maryland State Convention, um, FFA convention, um, from June 23rd through June 26th. Um, at the convention, we're going to have eight members compete in various competitions, from turf management to ag knowledge. And then we also have, um, I think, three members competing in public speaking. Mm. Um, so we all placed high enough to get to go do that. Um, so it's really important for us to go practice our skills through convention. And we're also going there to go to workshops uh, such as leadership workshops. And I think there's one about financial uh, intelligence and management. And then there's some farm tours we could go to all to uh, broaden ideas and knowledge about careers within the agricultural industry. Well, that sounds great. Any questions, comments? <coughs> okay, I get a motion. Make a motion to approve our field trip for Maryland FFA State Ch Convention. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, have fun, learn a lot. Thank, thank, thank you, you all for coming in. Thank you. All right, so next, I guess, Mr. Bearclaw, you, we're, you're up for a few of them. I am. All right. The next four. <sighs> Good evening, President Bennett, Vice President Bent, board members, Superintendent Salins, executive team. My name is Darrell Bearclaw. I'm the uh, school uh, facility coordinator. Uh, coming before you this evening for the Kent Island High School Phase Two stormwater management repairs. Uh, uh, Last year, you, you may recall, uh, we did a, a good bit of work out at Kent Island High School uh, repairing underground stormwater uh, lines that had uh, deteriorated, uh, just basically become damaged over time um, through attrition, just normal, normal wear and tear. Um, that project was uh, originally foreseen to be a start and end over that summer. Um, the contractor executing the work uh, did some more exploratory type work. We found a lot more damage than, than and, and repairs that were needed than what were, were expected out there. So uh, working closely with um, DPW, uh, we developed uh, basically a scope for phase two of the work um, and utilizing the same contractor and piggybacking onto the county contract we're able to bring him back to do the next uh, the next round of repairs that weren't able to be done last summer um, due to budget as well as timing. So this project um, would be the uh, the second part of that, and we foresee this as being uh, all of the work that's necessary to be done so that next year, uh, FY 26, we can come in and do the, the milling and repaving and get that, that school looking as, as well as what uh, Queen Anne's County High School looks like. And this is, and this is for uh, 25 capital. This is th this project that we're looking at is 25 capital, yes. And it's been approved and everything's been done with it. Uh, well, it, it has not yet been approved. Not, not the contract, but I'm talking about the funds have been allocated from the county for this project. 
the the funds are on their agenda for approval. They have not yet been approved by the county, but what we're trying to do is, is get everything set up to where we have contracts and we have board approval and those things out of the way so that once we get, I think their approval process is the end of May, if I'm not mistaken. So we will know very quickly here if, if, if but all the indications that we've got is, is that so our, our approval, if we, if we go with this would be upon approval uh, accepted by the county. You know that it goes to that because they're a funding source. This is 100% local funded, right? Well, what I'm saying is, if we approve it tonight, it could be contingent upon the county funding this project in their uh, FY25. Absolutely. Okay. So, if we don't approve it, what would would stormwater management be manageable? Would everything go on as status quo? If we don't approve it tonight, more than likely what we would do is we'd have to push this project to next summer, which means then the paving project would move to FY27. So we're basically pushing projects another another year if it doesn't get approved. And probably be more deterioration, I would think. It's not going to get it's not going to get any Better. cheaper to do it next year. Yeah. I mean, it's going to get deteriorate more if we don't get this done at some point. Well, that and you've got inflation and, and material costs that are going to escalate over another year. So you know you can anticipate you know maybe another five to seven percent on top of this for next year so well, this there's always deterioration but i was thinking sorry. i thought the no no i'm sorry just <laughs> quick the i thought that building um products were coming down finally that we had been high because of covid and that now we were finally seeing a reduction in um I don't know. In supplies. We are seeing a reduction in cost, okay. but I can't tell you what they're going to be a year from now. Right. Okay. Right. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Oh, you're fine. Kate. So I had a couple questions. So the county has put this out to bid, or they're just piggybacking off that the 4-H contract that they got a bid for back in um We are November. piggybacking on a contract, um, and there's a lot of... Um, savings in doing that uh, number one if we were to bid this project I, i'd have to hire an engineer to go out and and basically engineer all of this he'd have to prepare drawings he'd have to prepare specifications he'd have to we, we, we would have to then bid this work um this is is creating all those savings so there's probably about 25 to thirty-five thousand dollars, if not more of just straight engineering costs that that we're not seeing by this plus if we if we bid the project that doesn't guarantee that this number is going to come in lower okay so um i see what they put out to bid for the 4-h park itself um so this is coming in at six hundred and thirty nine thousand three hundred thirty nine and then what they bid on for the 4-H park, that one was 638238 so just $1,100 difference. But the difference is the county also got a $1.2 million grant from the Rural Maryland Economic Development to pay for that work. And then my next question is, um, this is all covered under Queen Anne's County MS4 permit. So Ken, Ken Island High School is within the urbanized area. So I'm not sure why is this coming out of our funding and not the county's because um, for their MC, their minimum control measure for the MS4 program for post construction, why aren't they doing the maintenance? And the phase one project that they did last year was MS4 money. My understanding, I can't speak to the county on their budget, but my understanding is is that those funds were exhausted, and that's why they're not picking up the tab. Well, in theory, they are picking up the tab for this because this is all 100% county Correct. funded. I mean, this is a CIP project that's going through the county. So, whether it's managed through whether it's managed through them or it's managed through us, we're trying to manage it ourselves versus uh, the, the management of the project that was done last year. That was through the county. Okay, so the funds are coming out of any of the county or the the school's budget for it's coming out of the, it's coming it's coming out out of the capital, capital improvement. We 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 have a capital improvement each year, and the county funds besides our. Uh, operating budget they fund a capital it's in the capital side which okay. is a one-time cost the county funds that to us and we put projects in front of them that can be moved in or out depending on if it's funded and they have quote unquote looks like it probably will be funded now my only concern would be contingent upon their 
funding of it, which I would Correct. I think a board member can make that recommendation. Although I think you said I, it is funded by us. This is, this is part of the monies that we've asked for. Is that correct? Part of the money in has been capital. allocated capital. to the school well, right, system from the right. county okay, so under their capital budget side. Right. No, I understand that. I think that you, you were asking, though, whether it was going to be in the county's budget or if it's coming out of the Board of Education budget. Yeah, that's budget. what I'm asking. Because I think it's coming out of the Board of Education budget. Well, it, it's county funded. So, so right. regardless of whether it, it, it it's it's coming from capital capital funds, county capital funds, regardless of whether what we're trying to do is we're trying to manage this project. Mm -hmm. Correct. So regardless of whether, whether we're managing the project or the county is managing the project, it's still capital funds. It's not, but I guess to kind of put it a different way, if this project isn't awarded, we're not gonna get $600,000 that we can do something else with. The county is gonna say, okay, well, if the board doesn't approve that, we're not going to give you six hundred ninety thousand dollars for additional capital that you can do whatever you want with it. We're going to take that six hundred ninety thousand dollars and we're going to hire them and we're and going to do, do it ourselves. Else. And so then you won't have any management. So it's not part of the monies that we've put into board of education budget that we've asked for. It's is part of not capital budget. Money. It, this, this is capital. I understand that. Okay. So well, yes, it's part of this the is board's. this is part of Queen Anne's County Public Schools capital mm -hmm. local capital project right. budget. It, it, okay. The county has service. put out a budget, which we'll have hearings on next week. Right. In our in their budget, I we're they earmarked five million over our budget from this previous year. So I'm going to use a number of sixty-eight million. They're funding us for mm -hmm. operating budget. Correct. They've also got a thing in there for capital projects, which usually is around three million dollars <laughs> for certain projects. This year they have a, a little bit more because you have a three-phase thing for paying the new board office. That's a capital thing, one-time cost. That is, it, it's board. It goes to the board, but it's capital money. That the county does a lot of capital projects. Right. And like you said, if we don't want to do this, and we think we shouldn't do this, they probably got other places they can spend this money. Right. Yeah, but if we don't yeah. spend the money, they're going to spend the money. But it, but it's not. We're not spending money just because we had spent. I mean, it is a need to have this corrected, just like we did Queen Anne's County's parking lot. And, Absolutely. You know. But there's also a lot um, since this falls under their MS4 permit at. Um, like inspection wise, when is the last time this is inspe inspected by the state? Is it in catastrophic failure? Is it what was the last rating it received? I I I, I don't know anything about their MS4 to be to be 100% honest with you. I'm not that familiar with how they how they manage ma manage that or what their inspection processes are. Um, I, I know that 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 was part of the project that they did last year that involved the stormwater management pond clearing around taking care of the vegetation around the stormwater management as well as some of the underground work that we did last year at Kennel, and that was all MS4. Well, this is MS4 too, because anything with any stormwater management system is considered post-construction. So any upkeep, maintenance, whatever you want to call it, it's all under their permit, and they have to by the state um, is a delegated agency for APA, so they have to by law do this. That's why I'm just trying to figure out if is weird that we there's no bids on this project. I can see piggybacking off another contract, but that contract is a completely different um, site and a completely different set of parameters for what stormwater repairs they did at the 4-H park, as opposed to the high school. That's why I'm just trying to. I mean, if, it, all this. if this is a large concern, I mean, I know time-wise we have, you know, deadlines to meet so that we can start as soon as possible, as soon as the the um, commissioners strike their budget. But I mean, if need be, we can certainly have a commissioner reach out and speak to you about that. Um, I, I am nervous about pushing it down because if we don't meet our timelines, then we will have to push it a whole year. So our timelines are always short this time of year as it relates to you know, bids for painting, bids for tiling, you know, roof roof stuff. I mean, this falls right in there with that. Um, well, that and just locking up contracts. I mean, it is really a time. phase two. This is not the first time that it has come to the board. This is phase two. We talked about this last year as it relates to what we were going to get finished the first year and how we were going to have to, um, you know, finish it basically the second year. We knew we weren't going to be able to complete all the work in one year. Well, I think last year it was a county managed project. So last year the, the phase one project did not come before the board because the way that the county was structuring and the way that the board was structuring a lot of capital projects, a lot of capital projects were being funded by the county as they would be as if they came to us. But the county was doing a lot of the management on their own terms and within their own 
in house, so right. to speak, like uh, like the track project at Queen Anne's County High School. That was similarly done, where the county basically um, bid that project out, and they let the contract on that job. They basically handled all of the requisitions for pay payment. They also handled all of the uh, the project management duties, but uh, biweekly progress meetings and this sort. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to get more into being able to manage the projects, both fiduciary you know, from a money standpoint, mm -hmm, as right. well as from just normal you know, construction administration right. process. And there will be a window if we approve this or bring it up on a vote, contingent upon the county putting in their FY25 capital budget, there'll be at least a week and probably more that any board member can talk to any county commissioner and say, I got concerns, this is not right, mm -hmm. to push it back. And they can do that. And if they don't fund us, we're not going to do it because because I'm not going to vote on something that's not contingent because the money's not there until the county approves it. And it's not coming out of our operating. It's coming out of the capital, which has not been approved for 25 for the, for the Correct. county. Correct. All right. So the bottom line is <clears throat> if we approve this tonight and then the county commissioners approve it, we're not cutting any teacher slots no. to pay for it, right? No. Okay. Good point. Absolutely Let's make that not. clear. Right. Thank you. Um, and it's going to be designated specifically for that. So... If, Correct. It, if and, this and is not included, right. and if and this is not approved and, uh, and included in their um, budget, we will not be pursuing and moving right. forward with that. Okay. We certainly well, and, don't and have the funds to do that's that. That's what I was going to say is, is that if, if we don't move forward with approving the 607 or whatever the, 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 the total is with the dollar amount, it's not as though we're going to have that money to be able to allocate somewhere else, right. especially right. shifting it to operations. Oh, no, no, I mean, no, we would, we would not. not be able to do that pretty much on, on any project. But, um, you know, I know the county, if, if we're not going to move forward with it, the county is going to just basically pull that money back. Yep. Madam President, could I make a motion to uh, accept the Queen Anne's County Board Station, except Kent Island High School Phase 2 Stormwater Management Repairs Phase 2? contract award for $639,339.40 contingent that the county commissioners approve it in their 25 FY capital budget for the school board. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. No on my end. Do, do you want to take a poll? I mean, uh, there were two no's were two and three. Two no's and three yeses. Three yeses. Mr. Schifanelli, Ms. Bent, and Mr. Smith, yay. Ms. Capes, Ms. Bennett, nay. Correct? Correct. Thank you. Okay. And who seconded that? I apologize. I think it was uh, Ms. Pick Bennett. one. We both had the same <laughs> time, so it doesn't matter. Okay, thank you. All right, next is our vestibule for Kent Island. Okay, next um, is the uh, Kent Island High School Guided Vestibule Contract Award. Um, in March of this year, uh, plans and specifications were made available. Uh, and the project was advertised on eMaryland Marketplace with plans and specifications available through Queen Anne's County website. <laughs> on the 2nd of May, bids were received with two general contractors submitting bid packages. Shortly after 2 p.m. deadline for submission, Queen Anne's County Public School staff opened the bids and read each aloud. Uh, on the second page, you'll see the bid results for the base bid um, of uh, $599,000, alternate number one for the window film, which uh, we, we are not opting to, uh, to include at this time, and alternate number two for $8,200, which we are looking to add, but that would be applicable to the Bayside Elementary School project only. Um, to give a little bit of information here on um, alternate number one for the vandal resistant film. The reason why we're not picking that up is, is that we had an evaluation in the office with Mr. Sabori, who is uh, undertaking uh, a larger project with a contractor doing a lot of the schools with a safety grant. Um, and uh, we're going to go ahead and price it out through that contractor and, and we'll get a little bit better economy to scale and, and be able to get it done for a little, little, little cheaper than we'll than what we've uh, be, be, been here. Thanks. Were there any, any questions? questions? I'm sorry, Kent Island. Do you want to go ahead and talk about Bayside? And we can vote on both. Talk about Bayside, and we'll. Certainly, certainly. So uh, both of these projects, um, the, the reason why um, it, it's kind of two uh, board items, um, but it looks like it's one bid. Um, we bid the project 
um, as one project, but we asked the contractors to provide pricing for each site as informational pricing. Uh, Scheibel Construction did come in a little bit lower than the, uh, the other contractor who submitted costs. The reason why we bid the project as, as one project, we wanted to ensure that we had one general contractor doing both sites. Um, the thought process behind that was, again, um, both projects just in and of themselves are kind of small in nature, and we wanted to give a, a contractor a sense of, you know, if they get a job, they're going to get a job that's going to be half a million dollars worth of work, not a small project that's going to be half that cost, and they might lose out on the second one, and they might not have that, that, that same economy um, coming across. The, um, also, um, if we were to do two projects, we, we have the potential for having two general contractors. That's going to basically mean I'm, I'm paying the architect double the amount of money on his construction administration services. We're going to have twice as many submittals to review. We've got double the progress meetings. He has to attend a progress meeting every two weeks. So we're going to have to pay him accordingly for that. So the project was assembled as kind of a one project with two separate costs. And the reason why there are two separate costs is, is that the county has funded this as two separate projects. So we've got two separate pots of money that we're going to have to invoice against. All right. We are still getting two different um, architectural drawings though, right? So whether We did get two sets two. of drawings, yes, yes. Two sets of drawings and one set of specifications. And that's the way we bid the project. And is this firm fixed? Yes, okay. yes, this is fixed. And this goes directly to the safety of our schools. I mean, the, the habit of best abuse are needed in all schools. Ab absolutely. This uh, Bayside and Kent Island, these two schools are the last two schools in the county that uh, that need to be done in order to, to address 100% of them with guided with the guided vestibule entries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the Queen Anne's. That turned out nice, the Queen Anne's so. High School. Okay, any other questions? Okay, a motion? make a motion that we approve <clears throat> the contract for base bid alternate number two to cyber construction to construct the guided vestibule entries at Bayside Elementary School and uh, Ken Island High School um, in the um, mm, let me go back to the piece of paper one second in the total amount of it's 600 it's over 600,000 um, Total would be six hundred and seven. Six hundred and seven thousand. Second. All those Second. in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, moving on. Video <clears throat> management. Okay, uh, last one up is the uh, replacement of the video management software system that we currently utilize at the school system. Um, we, we basically have a um, system here at at Queen Anne's County Public Schools that has reached its end of life. Uh, the manufacturer of that system, we've been told, is not doing any service updates on that system. So we started exploring alternate manufacturers to, uh, to come in and provide a new system. Um, along with providing a new video management system, we wanted to take the opportunity, since we were bidding the project, we wanted to take the opportunity to put out several unit price uh, line items. And what we're looking to do is, is, or what we did get, was we got pricing for several different um, cameras that we can uh, install throughout school system, as well as different card access features, the intercom system, um, wiring, conduit, other things that might happen uh, through the normal execution of work. So what we did was we put together a uh, base bid price for the video management system conversion, uh, which you'll see the uh, on, on the bid tab. We did have two contractors submit uh, their statement of qualifications, uh, their technical qualifications, as well as their proposal numbers. And their proposal numbers are what's shown on the second page. Um, Skyline Technology Solutions, who, is, who just happens to be our current vendor that we're getting uh, materials from, we're, we're piggybacking on uh, other county projects. We're utilizing them currently. This would give us a standalone project that is with Queen Anne's County, solely Queen Anne's County Public Schools. 
it gives us the opportunity to pretty much put a scope together, look at what the scope of work is, determine a rough order of magnitude of what we think those costs are going to be so that we can begin projecting what we what we believe costs are going to be for, for future work. Um, but as you can see through the line items, um, uh, Skyline Technologies is low on um, I, pretty much every one of the line items with the exception of maybe the um, the device installation, which was line 18, but all the other costs are, are low. Um, so what we would do over this summer, we would complete the conversion of the software management system. But what this project would do is, is the unit costs numbers one through tw uh, one through 20 there, they have to hold that pricing for one, one full year. So that would be July one to June 30. They hold that pricing. Then next year, they have the opportunity to look at their uh, pricing, look at what inflation is doing. They have the opportunity to adjust their price, but their, their adjustment is solely based upon the consumer price index. There is, there's instruments in the specification that, that tell them what they can and cannot increase by percentages. Um, but at the same point in time, it would have to be a mutually agreed upon price. I mean, they they would come with pricing we would either agree to it or disagree to it and if uh, we do agree to the pricing we can extend this for another year and then it, it would uh, then sunset two years out so we have this opportunity for three years so the the company that we currently have is what company skyline skyline, skyline is who we currently have now yes okay what's the life expectancy of this, this this new system pardon what's the life expectancy of this new system um, well, the life. Ex um, well, it's it's a software, so there's really nothing that um, is going to break per se that would need to be replaced. But software, it's just like everything else, goes through constant updates and and different evolutions of, of I mean do we think we can I mean five years I, I know you don't know things change things can change tomorrow but well it's this it's, system, it's not a, it's not a two year thing no 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 this system. Um, um, Genetech has been in operation for decades, and I don't foresee them going anywhere. Um, they've been Genetech for 10 years. They're going to be Genetech for another 10 years, I would venture to say. Um, they, um, this program is a program that is specific <laughs> to uh, K through 12 uh, education platform and what they do is, is they give a very reduced rate on the uh, initial installation and it's a five-year um, service maintenance agreement so if we have any issues with a camera not syncing up correctly or if we have a bug in the system that we can't take care of on our own we have five years worth of telephone support as well as other types of support that they can do um, a lot of other systems out there charge different th they charge different things they either get you on the licensing or they get you on the service maintenance agreement or, or something something like that so there's there, there's a lot of different ways that they can assess charges and such but um, as far as Genetech is concerned they've been around for a while and they're going to be around for a while um, just to give you a little bit of information about Genetech um, I've, I've got about two pages here of um, local, federal, and, and state agencies that they currently have um, as clients. Um, within, just in, within just Maryland, uh, four public school systems, uh, county school systems within Maryland are utilizing Genetech. Uh, Virginia, they have 15 count, uh, counties or jurisdictions that are, and that's just public K through 12, and there's so make tens of twenties that, that, that yeah, they're, there's quite a, they're, they're, they're a pretty well-known name in the, in the industry. I have a question. So I just got me thinking when you said it's our system has reached its end of life. Um, and we received an email before from, I don't, I just brought it up. Um, Elder, Elder was, the yeah, I had asked you and, um, you said that was a solicitation. So I just, well, no, that's what I that's what I was told. It was a solicitation that it wasn't. Yes. OK, so I just pulled up the email and uh, he's saying he's our point of contact channel manager and that our system is upgradable, the software. So I'm not following what. If, and if you look, I think that company has been bought, I think, three times since it was Ocularis. 
it was Ocularis, then it was uh, another name, and then it was Hexagon. So it, it, it's kind of showing kind of the history of where that where that software has gone. Um, I can't speak to Ocularis. My information is coming from Skyline, who is an Ocularis. Uh, they're our current vendor for Ocularis, and they're telling us that 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 they are not getting updates and they're not receiving their. Um, and they're being told that it is not being updated. So who who is he our point of contact for? I'm. I don't know who he's a point right. of contact think, for. He's a salesman. Sometimes with solicitation, honestly, they will tell you anything that they think. He's a, as he's long a as salesman. You they, will engage with them. They yeah. will really. He's a salesman. So, but is our we have Skyline? But who is who is our actual equipment from them? Not the software is through Skyline. They are an Ocularis um, dealer representative reseller. How you can't go. Like we as Queen Anne's County Public Schools or any other entity cannot go to Ocularis and buy product. They're going to, you've got to go through a reseller and the reseller is Skyline. So that's who we are paying what in here said the maintenance agreement? We are paying Skyline to, to the $147,000, uh, 140, yeah, 146,000 would be for Skyline to, to complete both the purchasing of, of the Genetech software on our behalf and do all of the labor to do the conversion, basically switching all of the cameras over, uh, which is all programming. Okay. Just, so Skyline- That's is for five one, years. Skyline is the one who told us, though, that we can't update our equipment. The that's one who's what getting we, that's what we were told. Okay. Um, real quick, though, when it's, we talked about IDIQ work, which gives them some leeway, uh, if it's IDIQ work and if indefinite duration and definite quantity, but the 15% um, of the after hour surcharge and the contractor's OHP, is that going to stay the same no matter what the the index says? Will that stay at 15%? Because I know the all of all of the all of the um, prices and and the percentages would be negotiable um, based upon the CPIs. Um, what, whatever happens with the consumer price in, index for our area. So if it says there was a 6% increase, that doesn't mean that he, his, his percentage is going to go from 15% to 21%. Again, that's something that we would have to agree upon prior to it being, being approved and, and moving forward. But these prices, the top price is a firm fixed price for the video management software conversion. That's something that's gonna take place from July to August of this year over se uh, summer break. That's a, a quick start, finish duration. The rest of these unit prices would be held for a year and they would take care of things. A, a perfect example would be um, our central office project. Um, our central office project has um, um, several locations throughout it for cameras and door access, uh, access control, electronic access. The, the project scope includes the backbone wiring and the box for all of that equipment. The actual devices, the camera, the camera installation and the programming is not in the general contractor's bid. So this gives us the opportunity now to know what all of those cameras are gonna, gonna cost from a price each. And since all of the wiring is completed, the wiring, there's no cost for the wiring since the contractor who we're paying for now, Doyle, to do the work, that's already in the scope of work. So all we're paying for is the camera and the installation and the programming cost for that. Okay, well, they were close. They were so, very close. Yeah, so it's... Uh, and I've worked with both of them before, okay. so they were very, very, very close and very competitive. Any other questions? Make sure I got that. Um, recommend that we approve the contract with Skyline Technology Solutions to convert the existing surveillance camera software to Gentech Security Desk EDU and the IDIQ unit prices for one year, extendable to three years total. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It's going to be no on my end. Okay. No for Ms. Capes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Hickey, all right. 
Good evening, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, and executive team. For the record, I'm Julie Hickey, coordinator of food service. I'm here before you tonight seeking approval for Queen Anne's County Public Schools to partner with Maryland's Shore Educational Food Service Consortium contract with Cisco Eastern Maryland for the delivery of food and food related products. Maryland Shore East Educational Food Service Consortium consists of the eight school districts on the Eastern Shore of Maryland to receive the best buying power, purchasing power of these food products. Caroline County Public Schools put the bid out for the delivery of the food and food related products for public bid and Cisco is the only bid received. Mm -hmm. um, the contract does contain the necessary clause which will permit us to partner and utilize their contract for cooperative purchasing of food and food related products. This, product, this contract was recently renewed for the third year to begin on July 1st, 2024 and there are two more years of renewal options available. Uh, the fiscal impact is expected to be 800,000 for the entire fiscal year 25. The funding will be out of the food service fund balance account. Um, it's necessary for us to accept this invitation um, since we'll be going self op as of July 1, 2024. Um, and we'll need to accept this invitation so that we can start ordering food to have it in house for our summer programs as well as for the start of the next school year. Any questions that I can answer. I did, well, I just had the question and I, I, I was not really sure maybe of how to phrase it. I was, I know we say that this is going to save us a lot of money by going from Sodexo to in-house, but I was curious as to, we had this contract for 800,000 for the food. Um, but what is what like what did Sodexo pay for a year of food? Like what was budgeted for? And, and, and this 800, this expected, um, the expected fiscal impact of the 800,000 takes into account what uh, Sodexo is currently paying. I can see their Cisco bills. And then we take into account what the CPI has been for food away from home over the past year, which is 4.6%. So we can add that onto the top of it. Um, so that number is based off of what Sodexo is paying. Okay, um, so we're saying that Sodexo paid 800,000. Uh, 800, well, minus that, whatever 4. that 4.8%. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. I, I was back in the day when we were, had it in-house, then we went out. <laughs> now we're coming back in. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going either way. Every time you change, you have concerns because there's always little things that tweaks and does this. I feel confident in you that you can handle this. But are these numbers from what we've seen in the past, and I know they did it, and we're, we're going to save on management and some of that stuff. Have you come up with any things that have maybe gone a little south on us yet? Not yet, no. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, no, but it I just, mean, it's, you know, it's just, correct, you know, it, it's a good thing to do. I'm not mm -hmm. criticizing it, but, you know, we, we have right. people, you, you, you got, you know, it, it's just, you know, and change is good sometimes, but it's, yeah, you got to be cautious. And, and what we, you know, have stressed to people too, especially in this first year, our operational budget may not look that different, but what we're doing is we are keeping all of that money in the county, able to utilize some local vendors, you know, eventually as we go forward in the next school year that we're not able to do right now. Um, so. One big thing for me is I, I really was sold on it. Not only, I mean, we want to save money, but I was really excited about the local partnerships we were saying we were going to do with the farms, especially with our FFA and just, I mean, obviously right. we're UJAG County. So I would like to maybe get some updates throughout the year of like, this is a partnership because I know we haven't reached out to any yet. I understand it's new and we yep. need to get our foundation done before we uh, go any further. Because um, it'd be really great to have some to do some kind of partnerships with those, even just educational and visiting. And so if you could just yeah. tag that onto your agenda sometime yeah. way down the line, uh, it'd be great to hear and, about and that. And we hope to in October, there's um, a homegrown school week that they promote the entire week in school. October. Partnering with your local farmers, you know, kind of spotlighting, mm -hmm. highlighting those foods that you can get from those local. So, you know, by October, we hope to have that partnership with a local vendor to have those items on the right menu. thanks like when we deal with cisco they're a big company right they probably invoice you you check it out you put it through pay payroll <laughs> and in 30 days they get paid right. a local vendor that's a small farmer but we have the ability to sit there when we buy something from them to be a more hands-on and quicker because you know some of these people when they sell you something 
they're not where, they're not a banker. They're not ready to wait for 30 but days for their money. I mean, we we understand that there'll be a little bit of difference when we deal with smaller. It's a good idea to deal with local people, but it's a different situation sometimes too. Yes. So we can handle that. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's going to come down to the CFO, finance yes. and how quickly we. Yeah. We got good credit. That's yeah. the question. Well, credit's good. Credit's <laughs> good. good. I'm, I don't think I, I think our credit's that's great. Right. Yeah. I'd like to deal with you, but some is a cash flow issue with yeah, some of these exactly. people. And if all of a sudden we come in, I'm not going to name any farms, but you'd come in with an asparagus or something you want to buy, and we're buying, you know, twenty thousand dollars worth. That might be a whole month for them, where, you know, they're used to having that. To get them paid quicker than the big, quicker. big vendors. Okay. I did one question. Did we address the communication issue? We had a young lady that showed up to ask about keeping all of the staff. Correct. And I thought that we had already fixed that. Have we completed or talked to them so that we, they now understand what the situation is? We had actually talked to them prior to that meeting. They all had an opportunity to come after they were informed of the um, converting to self op We held a meeting on that Wednesday after. Mm -hmm. um, they were made aware of it. They were all given the opportunity to come, and we did explain to them that there are no hourly positions being cut, and they're all encouraged to reapply when the positions become available. Okay. But yeah, there are no, no, no intention to cut any hourly staff. The people that are in the kitchens right now, the number of people that are there are the number of people that are needed to run those kitchens. Thank you. Just want to make sure. Mm -hmm. Yep, and they've all been given my name number to call with additional questions. But yeah, we I, we've addressed it. And very good. Yep. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mm. <clears throat> Recommend we approve the partnership with the Maryland Shore Educational Fund Service Consortium, contract with Cisco Eastern Maryland LLC for the delivery of food and food-related items. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, next, I'm seeking approval for Queen Anne's County Public Schools to piggyback on the Maryland Shore Educational Food Service Consortium's milk contract with Cloverland Dairy. Um, in order to function as self-operational, Queen Anne's County Public Schools will need to establish a contract with a vendor to provide milk in order to serve meals that are in compliance with the National School Lunch Program and National School Breakfast Program's federal guidelines. Um, our milk products are cur currently procured through our food service management contract. Um, Wacomico County Public Schools put the bid for the delivery of milk out to public bid. The contract contains the piggyback clause which permits us to utilize the Wacomico County Public Schools contract for purchasing milk and all other items listed on that proposal. Um, this contract is in effect until June 30th, 2026 unless terminated by the Wacomico County Public School Board. Um, the fiscal impact is expected to be 190000 dollars for the entire fiscal year 25 the funding will be out of the food service fund balance account how how much notice must they give us if they decide to terminate the contract i will have to get that answer for you okay um, I, I don't want us to be and what what's what, what's our uh game because plan if they it, do yeah if they do con you know why well, comic is fine right. and it's good doing it. i like it this way but if they go something goes wrong with them all of a sudden boom do yeah. we have a, a, a exit plan or you know another plan to get, make sure we can get it somewhere? I mean, we would continue. With Cloverland is the only milk I was going to say they're the only ones, and they've been I, around I mean, we're since running into, I was I mean, in school. Cloverland is the only farm. Only I'm sorry, farm. Uh, Cloverland is the only one that has K-12 compliant milk products. Right. Okay. Yeah, and it has been that way for, as for, I said since I was in school yeah. for sure. And, and Cloverland is our current milk provider as well so i mean it's just going to be with right. a different so wouldn't that, wouldn't that be hard to do a separate contract directly with them correct it would not and, and i have been in touch both with cloverland cisco i mean they i get um, they actually were in touch with me as soon as they heard that um the sodexo contract was mm -hmm. ending so yeah we, we there's really no options as far as your Cisco, your big vendor, and your Cloverland for your dairy vendor. Dairy I mean, it's interesting that are we involved. making permission? Not, not I many mean, people I can want see, to be in. You can see the little milk cartons because they have not even changed the milk cartons. Correct. 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 They're Forever. not two cents anymore, though, well, right? Well, they have this year because of the cardboard <laughs> You're shortage. You're dating oh, yourself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they package them in whatever oh uh, cardboard they can find. But, but yes, right. I mean, right. otherwise, but yeah, they're, it's all specially formulated. For K-12, it's nothing that you're going to find Here anywhere else. Cents, I get two for five. <laughs> well, you were so funny. If we contracted with them directly, the price would be higher? We don't know that. Our pricing actually is, 
on our white milk half pints is actually going to be better with the current piggybacking the, than it is right. with Sodexa right now. So the, I guess the question is, are we preparing ourselves that should they get out of the contract and we have to go directly with them, we can accommodate the difference? Yes. Uh, yep, because again, we figured in that CPI. Okay. Yep, I was going to say. Hmm? I'm sure our kids are covered. Yeah. Well, it probably wouldn't hurt to just even say what would it be if we contracted directly, directly, yeah. you know, just so we have yeah. that to work on. Mm -hmm. Since it would be with any, you know, anyway. Are there any other questions? Mm -hmm. Just uh, yeah. recommend the approval of the piggyback of Maryland's Shore Educational Food Service Consortium milk contract with Cloverland Dairy. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so I don't, not seeing Mr. Mr. Pages. I think oh, Mr. Kibler. Dr. Okay, Dr. Dr. Kibler. Dr. Kibler, sorry. Last minute substitution. Okay. If that's okay. From the 18th. Yeah. That's right. There you go. Uh, so good evening, uh, President Bennett, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. Uh, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Assistant Superintendent. So what I'm bringing uh, to you tonight for a vote is our prolonged state of emergency virtual education plan. This comes as a result of legislation passed in the 2023 uh, Maryland General Assembly session. Uh, uh, basically, there was a law passed. It had three components around virtual education. It had uh, what we're talking about here tonight, the prolonged state of emergency virtual education plan. Um, some guidelines if we wanted to have virtual education for like a snow day or something like that and then the third piece was around um having just a virtual education school uh sort of like our our bvp frankly but um so this piece that we're talking about tonight what we have to do is have a board approved plan guidelines for I'm going to read by definition a prolonged state of emergency and that means a state of emergency declared by the governor under title 14 of the public safety article that prevents regular in-person attendance at a public school for at least 14 consecutive days so it's basically getting us ready if the 100 year COVID event would happen again or something like that um, so we have to have something that we're ready to uh, pivot to the plan that you'll see tonight that if you reviewed it basically uh, will look like our first iteration of the COVID plan we had three years ago. The recovery and reopening plan was the document that uh, we had named back in 2020. Um, when you read through it, it is vague. It's intentionally vague because we don't know what prolonged state of emergency we're talking about. Right. There is um, language in the law that the county school board may adjust the virtual education plan to fit the specific needs of the schools affected in the specific circumstances of the emergency. We don't know if it's gonna be because of a flood, a hurricane, just a, some other sort of power outage. Would it be COVID again? Um, so that's, that's why you see it as written now. There was not a lot of guidance from the state on what needs to be included. So this is kind of minimal and bare bones. We have to have a board approved plan to submit to the state by June 1st. They will review it. And if it's not what they were thinking, they will bring it back to us and we can edit and, and resubmit. But it was an extremely uh, tight turnaround for us. As you know, I sat in the seat April 22nd, found out this had to be board approved and submitted by June 1st. So here we are. Yeah. No, I was very much appreciative that it was very mm -hmm. open-ended for um, us to make the best decisions for you know your executive team to make the best decisions. So I appreciated that very much. Yeah. One thing, I don't know if we can <laughs> add something in here because you know this board went through COVID. We know what happened, what we could and couldn't do this if we did something what replications we would have i just like something in here we understand this needs to be done but we also want to sit there and make sure that we feel the best possible learning is in person you know that the, the future this future boards of queen Anne's county figure if we can keep people in school mm -hmm. that i feel that's the best way because there's gonna be boards after us that are going to say well okay this is the well okay you know it's like the whole thing if you're gonna throw me in jail that's a problem but if it's a gray area I personally think that it caused a lot of problems us being out of school, even though some of the things people didn't understand why we had to do what we did. Right. But I just think it needs to be that the 
this board feels, I feel, that we should be in person at all, if, if everything you do, and I think the board probably agrees with that, wouldn't you? Well, I think we all agree with that, but How? it's because it's, it's a policy that we're supposed to put together for if it's an emergency where the governor keeps us out for the 14 days. I mean, so right. we all know that it was better for our kids to be in person and personally without a mask and personally, you know, that interaction. But if they're, but this plan is, is just for if we're out of school for the 14 days, but um, so It'll be longer than 14. But yeah, longer than the 14. Thank you. It's how you read things. I'm just worried about interpretation of how people, you know. I'm not going to carry the way. I'm really. happy to if if the board it, it, would like me to add a, a few sentences uh, f that Mr. Smith suggested. We certainly can can do that. I would suggest probably we put that in the background. Just make mm -hmm. a third paragraph that's two or three sentences, and I'm happy to add that if, if that's okay. Yeah, if, it's a consen if it's a consensus of the board. I know Mark and Helen were big on when they, you know, were appointed or elected to, uh, to get that open. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sure were. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah, I'm in agreement with that. Good times. So does, so yes, does someone to make a motion, though, to accept it? Sure. And you, do, wanna, you know what I mean? Yeah. With the addition to yeah. a third paragraph. Go ahead there, Mr. Yeah. Smith. And make well, let me get the thing up. <laughs> Make a motion we do to prolong state emergency virtual plan, but uh, put a paragraph in that uh, the board feels that uh, in-person uh, students' uh, education is a priority, or however you can diplomatically say it. But I, you know, sometimes it's like we were, we've been That's talking. That's a good motion. We, we've been talking about things and, you know, sometimes how people read things, interpretation, and, you know, if you yeah. put something just here, they say, well, this is what you got to do. Well, it's not necessarily what you have to do. The they board has some, I think, leeway sometimes, you know, and it, it might be a split decision, but at least, uh, at least our rec you know, we recognize it because it was a big problem for us. And this is, so I would, the, the law itself had like the three pieces. So, so this piece that we're talking about now is strictly if COVID happened again or something like that. This is not what you'll see some of the surrounding counties deciding to do where they go to synchronous or asynchronous learning just because they have a snow day or just because they wanna have an asynchronous day. That is not what this is giving us the ability to do, <laughs> which I think speaks to the point you're making, Mr. Yeah, Smith. Yeah, one, uh, you know, just, that is a separate piece of this law, like of the three big chunks, but that's not what this one is. I made a motion. Anybody second? Second. Did you second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Page, Supervisor of Instruction, for his leadership in organizing not only the CNI team, but uh, uh, executive team and members of, of the whole staff to put this plan together. We couldn't have done it in such a tight turnaround without his leadership. So I do want to thank him for that. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Thank Page. You. He's watching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. And now we have, um, who is doing our update? Is that? I think we're gonna- We're gonna tag, tag team, team. Okay. So, So Four Point Education, the um, partners who were here last time in person to present to you as well as the 21st Century um, Point of Contact um, uh, aren't, aren't able to be here this evening, but I remembered that Mr. Smith had specifically requested that it be on the agenda. So, um, so they actually developed this, but it's very similar to what you saw last time. There's some minor updates, but you know, to the presentation, but they're big updates as it relates to programming and moving forward. Um, so it's really, most of that is captured literally in the very second slide. So I'll turn it over to Dr. Kibler. Sure, I think, I think the big thing to hit from the last time that, uh, that they were here, like Dr. Salins mentioned, is that they were going to the local management board looking for an increase in funding from the $100,000 that was, I, I think, quote unquote, normal or what had been the trend to $200,000. And the um, happy to report that the local management board did approve that increase in funding. Um, and so that's going to allow us to operate the PFY menu school programming in a similar way to we are now. And we'll get to that slide in a minute. Mm -hmm. But it basically means the schools that have the out of school time programs this year are gonna to continue to be able to have those out of school time programs next year. Queen Anne's County Public Schools will not be um, managing, will be liaison, uh, just working with the groups that are, that are 
um, overseeing both the 21st century and the menu school um, operation. And the edge is, the edge uh, Ken Island business is overseeing the menu school option. <laughs> we will be partnering with messaging um, to faculty, staff, and, and families. So again, I, I guess we can just review this. You've got the Boys and Girls Club as the lead agency on the 21st century program. They, um, at last update, still have not heard back about their grant award. Um, we don't expect anything different, I don't think, but we would expect them to get that grant, but that would be for our Churchill Elementary, Sudlersville Elementary, and Graysonville Elementary schools. And then the PFY menu school option, the lead agency there is the EDGE, mm -hmm. uh, that, um, Kennard Elementary, Mattapique Elementary, Sudlersville Middle, Mattapique Middle, Stevensville Middle, and Centerville Middle. Just a quick question. So if by chance they weren't to get that grant, um, what would our programming look like on that Which piece? Grant? Which one? The, the 21st, 000, or the yeah, one 21st is not, yeah. Well, I, the one that we're waiting on. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll get the full 400,000. We, we typically don't. We ask for what we need and we already have some provisions and working with okay. them to look at, you know, transportation is a huge part of that. So, and would likely be removed from the grant in order to provide that. Um, we've looked at enrollment. We've looked at how the utilization of buses over the course of those three schools um, over several years. And we feel like that would be the biggest bang for our buck to remove if we had to take a chunk of money out and still be able to do programming. Um, Mr. Smith said staffing. Staffing wise, um, it'll go through the Boys and Girls Club. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I mean, and, and it likely could be our staff, but, but they also utilize high school students and capacities throughout their programs. Um, so I think their staffing will look different than the way we've staffed our 21st century grant in the prior years. Part of our agreement is we, we will advertise, advertise, I guess, just communicate right. mm -hmm. with principals yeah. and, and the teachers that there are these opportunities, but we would not be paying them. Um, right. They totally staff it themselves. We just would announce everything so that our staff would know that they have opportunities. When you said the schools that are going to be participating in this, if a school's not in it, can they apply to that school if they're still in our district? So like, like Ken Island and had a couple of other schools that weren't in this. The only, so the high schools aren't in it because they have their own mm -hmm. out of school time mm -hmm. programs. And then the only other two, I believe, are the two primaries, the K to Two that's schools. correct, and they have alphabets, so we don't typically do any programming there. And what two are those? That's uh, Ken yeah. Allen Elementary School and Centerville Elementary School. There are pre-K to two, so they have alphabets, which is another organization that you know we work with, a partner that uses our facilities. So they, they have after-school programs there? They right. do. They have before and after-school programming through alphabets at those well, two but, but, but these, are, these are summer elementary. programs. No, no, this is... These are during, during school. The school year. During the school year. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. gotcha. In the 21st century, that's just for Title I, right? Those are three Title I schools. You have Graysonville, Churchill, and Sellersville Elementary yeah. School. Yeah, completely different philosophy there. That programming is specially designed to, um, in, as an intervention for your lowest um, economically challenged, you know, groups within your school district. So they typically are Title I schools. So did you say that there may not be funding for the bus? There may not be transportation? Right, we've asked for 400000 um, I don't think that we would get the full 400000 So we've kind of analyzed it into not interrupt programming. Um, and we decided and looked at it that probably likely transportation would be what we would cut in the program so that we could still run programming. So it would be where parents would have to provide that transportation. I mean, I can't speak for anywhere else, but I could say for Sellersville Elementary, if there was to be no transportation, I don't think you would have a program, especially for the Title I school. I don't think the there would be anybody picking up well, and we, dropping off. We have looked at um, utilization of buses, and um, believe it or not, we a lot of the students do have transportation, and that's why we chose to go with that. We use the trend data from looking at um, the buses and the utilization of buses. Um, but certainly, when we get our final number, we can look at it and determine whether that's the best bang for a buck or not. So I appreciate that comment. And the parents need to do that as soon as possible so they know, right. when, you know when they sign up. I Absolutely. mean, I, I would rather sit there and have it no transportation initially. If we get it, it would be great. But if you have it and they plan on it and then don't have it, that would be a more disruptive. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so I just put the PFY menu program changes up too, just so you all could see this, this will, um, these schools will definitely not include transportation. It's just a not enough funding uh, based on the 200,000. Also because of the building use fee, we had to alter the programs a little bit. Um, so they are gonna be uh, a little bit, um, a little bit shorter next year but we're also helping out the costs by rather than like the middle school sports teams, rather than them consistently all season competing against each other, we're gonna go to a model where they instead have like an end of season tournament, just one place. So that uh, cuts That's down the cost, but allows us to still offer robust programming. Um, it's, and it's actually gonna allow more students to participate at the schools. Because if you think about it right now, like the middle school sports, like middle school basketball, from the whole school, they're only taking 15 kids or so to compete against each other in the teams. But now if we, if we house this just at the school and do like an intramural where they're competing amongst themselves, more kids would be able to participate mm -hmm. in those programs. So we actually think that that's, in some ways, this works out a little bit better too. I think it does too, and it's all inclusive of sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, Correct. which the program hasn't always been like that. So I think it's more opportunities for our students to be engaged. And I think, um, again, even though it's a shorter, you know, weeks from 26 weeks to 18 weeks, um, I'm still delighted that we're going to be able to get programming where more students are going to be able to participate. I, I don't agree with that. I think if we don't have transportation, I mean, I don't know, you know, the other end of the county, but I'm in the north end and. I don't think if these parents have transportation for their kids, it's not going to happen. I mean, I hope I'm wrong, but. I, I mean, I don't know that I necessarily disagree. I just know with the cost of oh, what. No, I understand. Yeah, what I don't saying. know. I don't know what we would do if we don't right. try this and see the utilization. <laughs> that would be the fear. I mean, if you, if you, yeah, if, you, if it's not feasible, you're just going to the thing. At least there's something there, and hopefully. You know, it's not perfect. It'd be right. nice to have everything, but we, we go that through our budget year every year, but what you have and what, you, what you're not gonna be able to afford. Any other questions? Nope. That, that kind of highlights one, yes. the big changes yeah. from yeah. last time. My biggest concern is just have the, whoever's doing it at these schools, keep people informed, keep the parents informed, right. because, you know, that was just a real, problem last year with yeah, that it's, it's actually been a problem since i got here the, yeah. all of the after school programming has been extremely challenging it's really been underfunded um and it's just it's just been a real challenge for but, us. i mean we need to be up front with them and say here's what's going to happen here and like right. like leah says okay we're not gonna have we're, we're gonna we, we'd like to have it but we might we're not gonna have transportation let them know this because we just can't wait september and all of a sudden to everybody fine well we thought this we thought that right we, agreed we, we, we need to have yeah. the information active people part of what four points is working on that we kind of glossed over is a communication plan to families and that will include just sort of that qacps is um handing this off to the outside agencies and and will be coming from them too yeah i had a quick question about the overhead across the schools i wasn't really clear on the the on the changes it said oversight by the edge we knew that but facility fees included is that the facility fees to use our, that they're paying to use our? Yes. That's correct. Okay. okay. That's correct. Just like Alpha Bus right. pays, Parks okay. and Rec pays, okay. the edge would have to pay as well. And that was, that was part of the, um, the shortening to include that. Okay. Is that the same thing under contract services where it says summer building use? Uh, page four under the 24, 25 changes. And then which, which row? Uh, contract services and then the bottom where it says summer building use and comma independent evaluation, budget 131, 800. I don't know why I'm not. Because well, one is it, that I think Boys it's and one Girls Club and the other one is the Edge. Is that correct? So oh, I'm sorry. The third one where it says summer building use under contract services. Yes, that's the same thing. That's just the different, the different, mm -hmm. different programs. So I'm that sorry, would be like I, camp like a if they do camp or something at yeah, the school. Okay. Yes, correct. I'm sorry, I thought. Oh no, you're it, fine. it is listed differently under the PFY budget. I I can't speak to that difference because I didn't put it yeah, together. Yeah, well, it's a little odd to have it with the two at the right, end. Right, and, and it's I would imagine that those budget areas are a little bit based on how the grant asked them to report out specifically as well.
Any other questions? So I do have one question about the roles and responsibilities. Just to have the um, oversight for the programs here on 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 our school property, because I know that it says that we're doing the coordination of the use of space and stuff. But the Edge and the Boys and Girls Club is there some oversight for us to them to see how the program is going? Are they submitting a program? There's an evaluation. Okay. Yep. There's it's um, actually the 21st century. It's written in their grant, and the L and B board actually um, requested specific. Um, checkpoints and data and they'll be working with um, John Grow as it relates to any of those okay. dating reporting right. yeah but 21st century it's a it's like it's a lot right. the 21st century grants is a lot of reporting the so, LMB obviously is not quite as extensive mm -hmm. but they still are requiring it as part of the two hundred thousand dollars okay so Thanks. if you look at the the second bullet under school district data sharing and the supporting the program reporting that's getting right at what what your your point is your question is and that'll be um so our new supervisor that we're bringing on dr jennifer schreckengoss um mr john grow um the supervisor of accountability and myself will all be part of the um qacps leadership team with this helping with that reporting and, and just evaluating the program and and frankly part of that will be getting to your point miss capes about mm -hmm. utilization at the different schools Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Smith for I Ready. She's been back there ready. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Ms. Bennett, Dr. Salins. Executive team and board members. I'm Amy Smith, Supervisor, Curriculum Instructions, K-12 Mathematics, and Gifted and Talented. And so today I'm bringing before you an informational piece um, for open public review of iReady Ready Classroom for grades 6, 7, and Advanced 7, which includes grade 8 material. And so that material is placed over by the bookshelf so that families could look at the books and see the resources for a possible text adoption. We know with our current data in mathematics, middle school's program is the next one that we need to look at. And we are currently on a year to year renewal contract with the resources that we have in place. So we investigated and put a um, search out for different texts that are available. I created a team of teachers and community members to come and review several different texts aligning with the standards that we're assessed on and looking at the materials we currently have to find what would be the best and most cost efficient um, resources to kind of redirect some of our instructional practices within the classroom. Um, the, there was three books that the, the teachers narrowed it down to. We piloted two in the spring the one that they ultimately chose and felt best supported students as well as teachers planning and resources for differentiation and expanding supporting learning gaps for students for interventions and enrichments was the iReady Ready Classroom. And it, as you know, we have that currently in our K-12. to So what makes it very nice is that we're using the diagnostics. It provides us great data and then to be able to have a continuation within the same program would be a wonderful feature. So right now, this is just information so that it's out for public review because we know adoptions have to have 30 day opportunity for parents and community members to look at resources if they would like. Um, we have my current budget line for text and resources allocated. And when we looked at that, it's a little over of where we would be at for my current coming year. And so we have looked at putting a amendment into the LEADS grant to cover one year um, of that contract to allow us to go into a three-year contract that actually ends up saving us a significant amount of money of what we are currently paying year to year using the Agile Minds resources. Um, and I've come to you every year with our year-to-year -year renewal going, please recognize that this year, if 
if the amendment is not approved, then we will continue forward with our current resources that we have. But the pricing from last year is about an 8% increase of where it was last year, and it's continuing to go up every time you go as just a year to year contract. Um, if it does not happen, at least we've gone through all the process so that hopefully with my next year's budget, then we would be able to move forward with a middle school full fledged adoption. But we needed to make sure we have everything in place um, if the Leeds grant amendment comes in. Do you mind me asking the, the people that were on your team, you said you had some uh, citizens, just some from the community. So were there the, any that had several of kids? the teachers that were in involved are also parents with kid, students in the middle school area. Um, I did not have anyone who kind of came forward and said that they could willingly come in and um, outside beyond that. That's why we also make that available so that individuals can take a look at, at the resources. Thank you. You said you uh, amendment to the Leeds grant. Yes. If we do that, then that will be a reoccurring cost for the future budgets. So the re we have the reoccurring cost with our current resources that okay. we have. This puts us in a three-year contract, so it would be paid with my current mathematics budget for July 1, okay. and the extra in Leeds allows us to go in a three-year lower price contract. And out of the textbooks that were selected, I had gotten quotes. I was pleasantly surprised, and part of which is because we are in a K-5 to contract with the company already, this bid was significantly less than even the other textbooks that I already bypassed all of the approvals of the, the teachers in all the different combinations. I had special educators, I had general educators, I had the advanced teachers involved in it um, and what, how they reviewed and, and responded to the resources and the students within the classroom responded. But if it's replacing something else, I, I see that, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, we're doing this. It's just, we're sensitive up here right now. I, for, I for, totally for grant agree. For using grant money for something and then all of a sudden it run out yeah. and somebody say, wait a second, it's I, not I, there. And, that, and, you know, if we have good reasoning and why it's we're going to move over, yep. n most people don't understand it, but, you know, we got to do our due diligence to make sure that no, we're physically, I absolutely. you know. And but that's I part of... Say we're going to save money, though, if we do that, right? Yes. Because, of being, and, by being and a because at this point, then I don't have to do it. I won't have to be here every year saying I need to renew my grade six and seven. Um, the other feature is come the end of next school year, my eighth grade text is then ended its contract. And by doing this, I've already discussed with the company of then being able to bring in eighth grade as well within our contract. And that's within my annual budget line for my text resources. I think I think what we could do for next month when we have the Leeds amendment, hopefully we can make the detailed savings known or just show how, how this how this is oh, benefiting be us. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So that'd you can see. Well and and I and just to give you an idea, we are about 25000 over my allotted money that's currently in my line for middle school, and that's for three years. Well, when you're talking about three years at 25000 extra just for this part, that's already a, a significant savings because this year the pricing for it takes up what was initially allocated plus a little bit more, and next year's would go up and bypass that amount. Um, and so now this would then actually give me one more year in contract of that funds being able to build and, and replace some other resources that we need to on an annual basis anyways. Any other questions for me? Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great evening. Thanks for waiting. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Kibler, are you guys tag teaming or just Dr. No, Kibler? No. This All right. is All right. old yeah. Dr. Kibler. <laughs> This one's just I me, and, yeah. and really, this is just an update tonight. So um, May 1st, we had to submit our updated blueprint implementation plan. So it's there for your review. Again, this is um, just like last year, we, and we've talked throughout the year, just our um, update we needed to make. You, if, you, if you do review it, you'll notice it's kind of broken into two sections. The first part is a district-wide implementation plan. It's about 10 pages, and then after that, it goes into our plans pillar by pillar. Uh, the first part, the first 10 pages had to be submitted on March 15th, I believe, and I am happy to report that we actually 
got the first 10 pages approved with no changes. Oh, wow. So that was, um, that was really exciting. So the, um, the rest of it is being reviewed now. It would be formally adopted by the AIB just like last year sometime in July. We are expected to have to make edits back and forth just like we did last year. But I wanted you to see what this first draft was uh, like right now. Hopefully it's not a first draft. Hopefully it's a final plan, right. but I, I don't yeah. know that we're that lucky. Is this on our website so people can take a look at the, or do we have to wait until it's been? So they actually, they did it a little bit differently this year. As soon as we submitted to the state, it was live. Okay. So it's through the AIB site. So now it's on board docs as well it's, as it's on the AIB's website. If you'd like me to link it in its current form on our website, I can. Last year, I think we waited till we had the final approved plan. We can't wait that because I know that, you know, for anyone listening in, there's a lot of talk about the blueprint and this will give you a lot of information. Sure. A lot of the mandates, a lot of the pillars, and it'll give you, I think, a lot of information that would be helpful. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, it, do we, can we have something on our website to show them where to go to to look mm -hmm. at a draft? Of course, it, yeah, since it's in the state, then we'll put it on ours sure. once it's approved because mm -hmm. if they see it on us, they're going to think it's ours. Mm -hmm. right. I don't, right. yeah, I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head if on the website when I, when we designed it, if we pointed to the AIB's site, but I certainly can may have, well, at least Please, if so, I'll have it changed or ask it sure, of to course. that site and then you can. No, I think that's a great idea. I, I just, I, I don't remember if we're there yet or not, but yeah, we'll make that change. Thank you. Thank you for that. Sure. Hopefully no changes. It's perfect <laughs> the way it is. <laughs> All right, um, Ms. Gass, now um, just to put out there for the budget book, we know that this was put on late, and we, but we it want was. to get this. I mean, it's pressing, but of course, most of us are not going to have had any chance to have you reviewed this yet. Um, so we'll be coming back, I think, with questions and maybe the next. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll put it right back on the next yeah. one. So we, if you want to yeah. pass out the hard copies. Um, yes, it was, it was definitely late being posted. Our apologies for yeah. that. Hot topic. There's been a hot, right, a hot topic and wanted to make sure that it was accurate and... Um, Thank you. Um, it looks costly. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, yes. Thank you. Oh, the good news is, is that the format hasn't changed, so it'll be very familiar yes. to you. Um, and, you know, there's been... Um, unfortunately, the only thing that changed is the bottom line. Yes. yes. And just to, this um, is just support for the budget that you've already approved. So there's no changes. Oh. This reflects the budget that we already have already approved. approved. Mm -hmm. The draft budget that was already approved. That's so there's no changes to the totals. This is it's just updated. To, it's updated to uh, state. Yes. Well, yep. that's moved a little bit. Yes, that's mm -hmm. the only thing that has changed. And it's the five million approved. that the five million over last year. What the county's doing. It's still the same. Yes, correct. So just for the record, can you at least say? Sure, absolutely, sir. For the record, um, Dr. Sealings, Dr. Kipler, um, President Bennett, and Vice President Bent. Members of the board, the executive team. Um, I'm Whitney Gass. This is the um, an informational item for you as well. This is the details for the draft 25 budget that has been approved and sent to the county as well. Is this found on our website? It is not yet. Okay. It's on the board docs. It's on board oh, docs right now. But okay. Yeah. Just I want people to know to where to find this stuff so that instead so of you know guessing what we're absolutely. doing, this is an opportunity yeah, for you to go and see where this money is being applied i was gonna say but we can't put it out there until they approve our budget right I think well we can put out our we can put out our proposed budget i mean we're here in yes. open and typically we, we have correct? put our yeah. proposed budget out but i wanted you to have the chance to review no, thank and you agree okay. and then we can put out the proposed budget and then the final budget will be once we receive the final numbers so as you as you flip again you're, you're not going to see any different formatting than you've right. seen before you see the summary that you approved then you'll see all of our revenues that are um, unrestricted funds, uh, continuum of revenues of what's restricted. Um, and then you'll see the approved budget from last year side by side with the approved budget for this year, um, which I think will be helpful for the board to look at the different categories to see which ones. Now, I, I will say that, you know, at first when I was reviewing it, you look at the, um, some of the overall salaries and one of them not really increasing, I mean, not 
increasing significantly and it's because we are predicted to have 53 less positions so we have to take that into account as it relates to that salary line item mm -hmm. um, even though there are salary enhancements in that line item mm -hmm. it, the difference you know one would think it would be much much different number but it's because you're reducing your overall staff by 53 so we have to keep that in mind as we're looking at the numbers you will see um and i'm sorry can you repeat yes. um remind me how many positions are we losing because the grants are gone 24 24 okay thank you yes of course um so the different categories none of those categories have changed they're mm -hmm. all the same and they're all broken down in exactly the same manner you'll notice on the right hand side that there is an approved increase or decrease and that's what as a board i would would um ask you to, to specifically take note of and when you have questions about either an increase or decrease that would be a great opportunity for for next time as we come together um you'll notice that the that when you get back to the, the categories um, such as transportation operations of plant and equipment you'll notice that you'll see a lot of increases there and that, that is that percentage that we put um, because of the trend data and it hadn't been increased for many, many years, you'll see that we put those increases in there this year. Um, so that'll, that'll be the spot that you'll see most of those increases. Um, and you, you definitely won't see decreases in that area because of the cost of doing business. I ask a quick question about farms. Mm -hmm. um, I know that because uh, it's showing the comparison from last to 22 and 23 mm -hmm. and it's a little bit lower um, this year with Churchill the other one seemed pretty consistent but are we back to our pre-COVID time because I know we had a really hard time getting people to sign up when everybody was getting their meals during COVID is that accurate and so we were trying to make it easy for people to re-sign up for the farms program you know, I, I wish Jolie was still here okay, because no, she, she really is right. the expert yeah. in okay. that. But I will tell you that she she did an, an amazing job of just pushing, pushing, pushing mm -hmm. the schools to get the numbers where they are. So I don't That's, know that I yeah. know the trends, but I know that she has um, definitely put a lot of time and energy into getting them. Um, and obviously we have, um, based on this information, we have Sellersville Elementary School that is, mm -hmm. you know, now a community school. And you'll, you'll notice that Churchill is very, very close. You'll also note that Graysonville is um, fairly close as well as mm -hmm. Sellersville Middle School. So those are some that we're looking at that we will continue to push to try to get those numbers um, as high as we can so that we can um, consider them. A you know, we don't do the formula for the community mm -hmm. schools. It's a formula that's there, and as soon as you meet that mark, they tell you, hey, you're a community school, and you get additional monies for that. So um, we're hopeful that we can continue to, to make those numbers grow. But I can certainly have Julie give you some trend data as it relates to what our farms numbers have been in every school over like a five-year period, if that's helpful. Yeah. yeah, well, I just knew it was a concern. It, it is a concern, yes. We can get this, we you do. know this it, money and we absolutely right. can and it's significant money yeah. i mean this year for um selfish elementary school it's two hundred seventy three thousand dollars that um pays for a school um community coordinator as well as um, a full-time nurse and it also allows us to have extended hours in our school-based health center um throughout the week uh consistently for the community to come um so that's that's really big right. for parents who right. may not be able to get um, their child to um, health care during during the school day, and um, it's great for sports physicals and vaccinations and other things like that. So, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for the right, guest. Yeah. Um, and I and I certainly, if any board member would, you know, has a desire to sit um, and and go through the budget book with Ms. Gash, she can certainly make herself available to do so. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Gast? Okay. So future meetings, June 5th is our regular board meeting, 6 p.m. here, and then June 19th will be our work session at 5 p.m. Can I get a motion to adjourn open session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I get a motion to move into closed session? Motion to move into closed session. Well, we have to read why why, we're, why they're going into closed session. Okay.
Pursuant to the general provisions of Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction. Any other personal matter that affects one or more specific individuals and to conduct collective bargaining negotiations or consider matters that relate to the negotiations. 